So earlier this month, I came across a really interesting article in the BBC. Stephen Thaler, an inventor from Missouri, had created an AI algorithm called Davis, or Davis. There might be a lot of mispronunciations in this video. Davis was previously known for creating surreal art, but Thaler had developed it to devise and develop new ideas. In other words, to invent. And Davis went on to invent two things. The first thing is a food container that Thaler claims seals more tightly than other food containers and has grooves around the edges so that robotic arms are able to pick it up more easily. The second invention is a lamp that flickers with a rhythm that mimics the neural processes associated with ideation. The flickering pattern is apparently very hard to ignore, which would make it a great warning light. So Thaler and two professors from the University of Surrey in the UK have teamed up to file patents for these two inventions. The catch? They want Davis to be listed as the inventor and to have all intellectual property rights. So we've talked about this in previous videos, but there are many ways in which the legal system, especially in the US, is not prepared to deal with artificial intelligence, and legal personhood is one of them. We've seen similar issues when generative adversarial networks were used to develop paintings. What happens when someone uses an algorithm that's heavily based on someone else's code to generate a painting that goes on to be sold for several thousand dollars at a Sotheby's auction, as we saw in earlier videos. The ownership of the algorithm, and by proxy the painting, and by proxy the money that was received for selling the painting, becomes kind of unclear. Similarly, Sophia, the humanoid robot, who we've discussed in the past, received citizenship from Saudi Arabia, and a chatbot that emulates a seven-year-old boy became an official legal citizen of Tokyo, both of which imply some level of legal personhood. Now, this also isn't the first time that we've discussed whether or not AI can be a person, but it's usually been from a more philosophical approach, looking at things like the Turing test to see whether humans can distinguish AI systems from other human beings. Today, we're confronted with the challenges posed by the legal frameworks that define our societies. In the case of granting Davis's patents, Patent law in both the US, the UK, and Europe currently require that inventors must be a human, so Davis is not able to be the inventor on those patents. The law just doesn't allow for it. But what is a person? The next part of this video is going to reference some of the material from an open source book that's currently in development called A Law for Computer Scientists, written by Muriel Hildebrandt, uh, who's a professor in Europe. And I highly recommend reading through the whole thing because it's actually a really, really interesting book. So there are actually two types of persons, at least in the US. There are natural persons and legal persons. Human beings like us fall into the natural persons category, although in the past this hasn't always been true, especially in cases of women's rights and slavery. There were instances where human beings were denied natural personhood so that they could not own property, vote, and otherwise have rights. On the other hand, legal personhood can be granted to non-human entities, things like corporations and states. This is a restricted form of personhood, as these entities don't typically have all of the rights that a normal human being would have. And an often referenced example of this is Citizens United, a Supreme Court ruling that declared that corporations could basically donate to political campaigns as a person would. Now, the ruling doesn't actually mention legal personhood anywhere in the document, but it argues that political speech rights do not depend on the identity of the speaker, where the speaker can be a collection of individuals, such as a corporation. Well, if a corporation can be a person, then why not an algorithm? My first thought was that since an algorithm isn't a collection of people, unless you consider the developers to be part of the algorithm, then the corporation's argument doesn't really apply because there's no people involved. People have actually tried to use this argument to prove that algorithms could have legal personhood by creating LLCs and then making the algorithm run the LLC. Having said that, a person still created and there is still a person who owns the LLC itself. So the short answer to this, as far as I can tell, is that there's no existing legal framework that would allow algorithms to be granted legal personhood and therefore get a patent or otherwise have rights. Having said that, it does not mean that legislators could not create such a framework. And they are thinking about it. A resolution to explore the implications of civil law for robots passed the European Parliament in 2017, and the US Congress has been having many, many hearings on AI in a variety of contexts. But legislators would have to weigh the pros and cons of such a decision, and it wouldn't be an easy one. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. 
Personally, I don't really think that we should give algorithms personhood. To give an algorithm personhood would make it a lot harder to come after companies who implement algorithms on real people that have negative consequences because of bias and fairness issues, because instead of suing the company, you'd sue the algorithm, and I have absolutely no idea how that would work and could not find any case law on it. It would act as a shield for corporations, essentially. Additionally, I just don't really see any positive uses for it. I don't see any benefits to having an algorithm that's a person, other than a PR boost for a country that decides to implement something like that. It would also have a lot of implications on human rights, because if we're giving algorithms rights, then what does that mean about our relationship to algorithms and what does that mean in terms of equality between us? Basically, I think that it would create a much more complex system for no real positive reason, but I want to hear your thoughts, so let me know in the comments. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my current patrons for your support. We're actually going to be doing a Patreon revamp in the next couple weeks, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, if you'd like to find me on social media, I'm on Instagram and Twitter, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.